Today, he is front page news. Your name? Brad, little Brad, Brad Jr. And is there a big Brad? Who is he? He's my father. A man too dangerous to get close to. A boy too dazzled to break away. Sean Penn is Brad Whitewood Jr. A line wire kid in a dead end town. Yearning for a family he's never known. Guess you must have heard about me. I heard you as a thief. I see something in you. The caretaker's light just went on. I see you got something. Terry and I are leaving. We're getting out of here. Family gun, Dad. I love you. Is that what you want to hear? Wow! I love you too, Dad. Sean Penn. Christopher Walken. Like father. Like son. Like hell. At close range. Featuring Madonna's hit song, Live to Tell. What's going on, everyone? I'm back again with another review, and this time I'm going to be discussing the criminally underrated 1986 neo noir crime drama film At Close Range. And there's the tagline like father, like son, like hell. And our two main stars are Sean Penn and Christopher Walken. They both portray um, Brad Jr. and Brad Sr., respectively, and both give excellent performances in this movie. And in addition, you also have a great supporting cast as well. You have Mary Stuart Masterson, who plays the love interest of Sean Penn as Terry. You also have the late Christopher Penn, Sean Penn's younger brother in real life. He's sadly no longer with us. He's been passed away since uh, 2006 in January, so roughly around 15 years. You also have Crispin Glover, who's just coming off his success of Back to the Future as Lucas. You also have another uh, actor who just came off the success of Fright Night as Evil Ed, as um, Stephen Jeffries. You also have a young and upcoming um, uh, Kiefer Sutherland as Tim, and they all three of them would as you know assist um, Brad and Tommy as they are pretty much buddies, and they bas and they basically become you know another game that Brad tries to form, which I will later go go into when I discuss this further. Um, you also have a couple of notable actors in here, like uh, David Strathrium as uh, Tony Pine, J.C. Quinn as Boyd, uh, Tracy Walter as Patch, R.D. Call as Dickie, and basically all those four are basically associates of Brad Sr., the experienced um, criminal crew of Brad. And then you also have Candy Clark as Mary Sue, kind of Brad Sr.'s live-in girlfriend. Then you also have... Millie Perkins as Julie, who is the mother of of both Brad Jr. and Tommy, and also you also you also have uh, Eileen Ryan as Grandma, who's in fact uh, Sean Penn and Chris Penn's uh, real life mother. So an interesting bit of trivia right there. Uh, and I believe that's it for as far as notable cast members. And I definitely enjoyed this film for sure. Um, it's got excellent performances. You got a well-written script, you got you know good lines of dialogue, the cinematography is, is really good as well. But I'll be honest, this film is not for everyone because of its grim, dark, depressing, and somewhat bleak nature. And there's maybe a glimpse of hope in the end, but not very. And also, this was in fact based on a true story that happened in the late 1970s up in, you know, in eastern Pennsylvania specifically. The film takes place on uh, spring of 1978. Basically, the film is focusing more on uh, Brad Jr., who is basically an out-of-work teenager, basically trying to find his way into life, um, trying to find, uh, trying to connect, and trying to find some kind of guidance in life because he really didn't have that. And um, he's basically trying to reconnect with his estranged and absent biological father, portrayed by Christopher Walken as Brad Sr. And speaking of that, um, the actual uh, story that it's based on, it's really based on Bruce Johnston Jr. and Bruce Johnston Sr. respectively. And they, of course, changed the names, you know, with certain liberties in the film to um, 
to Brad Whitewood Jr. and Brad Whitewood Sr. And basically, Brad wants to really get involved within the, the criminal underworld, believing that's the, pretty much the easy way in life, and he makes good money because Brad Sr. always occasionally drops by at the house with loads of money and, ha and somehow able to afford these uh, classic cars. So he kind of wants to learn the ins and outs and basically just uh, romanticize the idea of that, you know, being a career criminal might be the best way to go for him. So he has, so in a way, uh, Brad ends up, Brad Jr. tries to formulate a, a game of his own, which in, consists of his brother Tommy, Lucas, Aggie, and Tim. They're able to fence, you know, st stolen goods through, um, Brad Sr.'s uh, criminal network um, takes a little bit of time, but you know Brad Sr. sees potential in Brad Jr., but uh, he eventually decides to allow him into the game at, at, at a later point, basically because he's blood. And while that's also happening, Brad Jr. Uh, starts to associate and get to know this younger girl, uh, younger teenager by the name of Terry, played by Mary Stuart Masterson. Um, and yeah, they they end up becoming lovers in the film. So while that's going on, Brad's you know learning to become a watch and starts really you know getting the the feel for being a you know, being involved in the criminal en enterprise. But when he witnesses a murder uh, that has been kind of orchestrated by Brad Senior, mainly because he's a former associate, and he's been talking to the police somehow that could link him to other. Um, unsolved uh, cases of uh, stolen goods and whatnot he basically orders one of his men to drown this guy and so Brad decides he wants to leave and hopefully take Terry along with him and while Brad senior is seen on the outside as maybe this charming uh, funny and somewhat charismatic individual you start to really learn he's anything but that, and it only gets worse from there on out. Um, and just right off the bat, um, both Sean Penn and Christopher Walken have this really great um, fiery, um, intense chemistry that you know that that really shows itself. You know, shouldn't have. And um, there's this the scene in particular is whenever he's interacting with his. With him and his brother and he decides he doesn't want to go on here and I'm going to actually show the clip right now. I'm not going out tonight. Why? I'm not going out anymore. You want to live in a dump like this? Working Ten hours a day in a cannery. I thought you were like me. I thought you wanted something. A car. Nice girl sitting in your lap. Money in your pocket. You said I could go out on the side, right? You scared? I got something else. Something or somebody? Yeah. Terry and I are getting out of here. Where are you going to go? What are you going to do when you get where you go? I got some ideas. <laughs> How are you going to pay? Apartment, food, clothes, all that. I'll find something. You find shit. All you know is how to steal. You're too fucking dumb to do that by yourself. Oh, you think so? I know so. You come back, crawling back to my daddy, down to give me something. Well, we'll see. Yeah, we'll yeah, see. We'll okay. see. Oh, and unfortunately, he attempts to do one last job, uh, Brad Jr., along with his gang, to steal these tractors, but unfortunately, they end up getting caught. And as a result, the FBI realizes that since he's, since Brad Jr. is, is the son of Brad Sr., um, Brad, you know, since he's a Whitewood, they realize that maybe they can get s some dirt and some and and basically have him arrested, you know, f because of the because um, of probably the because one of his associates must have mentioned his name, 
And so, as a result, um, Sean, not Sean, uh, Christopher Walken, uh, Brad just Sr., really feels like uh, the best way to do this is eliminate them. So, but before he gets to that, he actually starts off believing that uh, Brad Jr.'s relationship with uh, Terry is basically a mistake. So, he d does what he can to self destruct that relationship. He basically gets Terry drunk and stoned. And there's a very vicious and intense scene between them at this motel where he's telling her, you know, you're, you, you, that's a mistake. You can't see my son anymore. You talk too much. You think too much. You got a big mouth. And uh, Terry's not relenting. She's basically standing up for himself, for herself and basically saying that the answer is no. And he viciously rapes her, assaults her. And it really shows how much of a sinister character, if if not evil, that Brad C Brad Singer is. And Christopher Walken plays him to a T. He, like I said, he's cold-blooded. He's just narcissistic. He has sociopathical tendencies. Um, just every other negative connotation you can think of. He's very intense in that performance. Um, he's very intimidating. He um, just, even through the the look of his eyes, he just. Just the way he stares and gazes at you, he just you just are scared to even interact with this guy, and that's that's a credit to Christopher Walken, really excellent of an actor. Christopher Walken really is, and Sean Penn is also quite excellent as um, a misguided teenager, really trying to find his way in life, trying to find a family that he never really had before. But he also ends up really finding love with Terry, and and while he's not the most likable character, he. he um, He's misguided, and he he actually wants to at least try to turn his life around before you know things got really serious. And you kind of you kind of really actually root for Mary Stuart Masterson's character Terry, and um, you also feel f for the fact that um, that you know while naive and innocent she is, she she has she shows she shows very loving support for Brad despite for what he does. He's, she's very loving towards him. She really wants to be with him. She wants to start a life with him. And you really root for her, in a sense, for her to actually make it out of this dead-end town that's like, there's nothing to it. And spoilers, spoilers, if you don't want to uh, watch it any further, um, you can stop here and you can go watch the film. But if you already know and you've seen it, feel free to continue to watch on. But anywho, um, they, they she basically doesn't, unfortunately. And um, there's actually one additional character that you also feel sorry for, and that's uh, Tom. Basically, because of the fact that Brad and his associates, you know, that included Tommy, Lucas, Aggie, and Tim, though somehow Tim actually doesn't get killed, the other three do. Um, most sympathetic you feel is probably Tommy because he was actually subpoenaed this and he was pretty much caught in a no-win situation and Brad Sr. feels like the need to really prevent himself from being serving time in jail is to eliminate them so he eliminates Lucas first and he eliminates Aggie and then next up I'll show this other clip where he basically confronts Tommy <laughs> Ever been out west, Tommy? No. Ever heard of coyote? No. They make the sound like woo woo woo. Coyote bitch gets in the heat. First thing she does, she took care of the males. Then she heads toward town. All the neighborhood dogs, they smell her. They go crazy. They follow her. She lures them out onto the desert. She get a dog out there, alone. All the other coyotes come along. They circle around. You kill that dog. Eat it. Tommy, if you was to go up in front of that grand jury, what would you say? Nothing.
Yeah. Liar! Show how much of an evil bastard Christopher Walken is. Um, and not only that, apparently, when they all decide the, the pretty much the game that they decide they're going to eliminate uh, Prison, they're going to eliminate Brad Jr. and Terry. And actually, one of them, I believe, I don't know which one it is, but one of them actually decides they don't want to have any more to do with this. They're ambushed and pretty much shot to death in the car. Uh, Terry dies instantly, but somehow Brad miraculously survives. And there's a very um, interesting scene where he actually somehow is able to try to, he's trying to wash the blood off from the bullet clothes, but of course there's, you know, blood still kind of dripping, so he has to kind of use handkerchiefs to kind of tie it up to at least stop the bleeding. And somehow he uh, he is able to confront his father, uh, Brad Sr. And it's a very tense, very intense scene where basically he grabs the family gun. He's like, did you use this on on Tommy? Did you use it to kill it on Terry? And did you use it to kill it on me? Now, I can't really reenact re this scene, but it's a very, very well acted scene between the two of them. And Christopher Walken's at first kind of gaslighting him, saying he'd gone crazy. And um, he says something like, well, what do you want to hear? That I love you? That I, that I care for you? That I feel something for you? So yeah, it kind of explains his kind of, you know, really the fake attempt to kind of establish love. And like I said before, um, Brad Sr. is definitely uh, just intimidating, cold-blooded, um, and just sinister overall. And there's just really no hope for him, and there's really nothing pleasant about him whatsoever. And um, it's really sad that we don't really get actors of that caliber anymore. And, uh, and the way uh, Christopher Walken is able to transition into that role, he, he does it with ease because he can play he can play a variety of roles, whether it be a soldier and the deer hunter, which I've yet to see, um, a, a man with psychic abilities and the dead zone. Um, he was in a film called Brainstorm, which I heard he was also good in, but I haven't seen it yet. Uh, he played a normal character in, a, in an alien-related film called Communion. He also played a drug kingpin in... I think it's called Kings of New York or something like that. Uh, he can also play, you know, star in a comedy like Joe Dirt. And I think he was also in the sequel too. Um, and amongst other roles too. And Chris, and not sorry, Chris, but Sean Penn, um, hands down, he is really great in this. He really has shown that he, uh, you know, he can, he started off in the role of Spicoli in Fast Times at Richmond High, but he's really evolved to being a really serious actor when he did films like like bad boys and and then of course this film um, it really shows how much of a of a actor he's involved because he really gives you know a great performance as uh, Brad Jr. He's a character that you like I said before is misguided but you kind of hope that he's able to turn his life around because he really wants to start a good solid life with Terry. He actually intends on going to you know Terry's grand grandfather's farm up in Tennessee but of course that doesn't happen um, and the way he confronts his father and then the, by the end whenever he's sitting in the in the courtroom just very uh, emotional filled with so much hurt and betrayal and when they ask him you know something about Brad senior he just he has to really kind of pull himself together and then he just basically says he's my father and like I said before, Mary Stuart Masterton gives, you know, a really great performance as a really young, naive, and innocent girl who you you really do hope for, you root for, you hope that she gets out. She's really the most likable character because she's very supportive of Brad despite what he's involved with. And she, it shows why she is that, that good of an actress and why she would go on to appear in other films like Some Kind of Wonderful, Fried Green Tomatoes, and so many other films. And while they're, the other supporting characters, they give very solid, decent performances, like uh, Tracy Walter, who was, uh, who would later be seen as Bob in, in the Batman 1989, where he's where jo he's like the Joker's number one guy. And and David Strathian, you would, he would all go on to be uh, in so many other films, like uh, A Dangerous Woman, Dolores Claiborne, uh, The Bourne Ultimatum. It really shows the caliber of what these actors would go on to do 
Sally Stephen Jeffries, he would the other film I know he would do after this that I remember him in was Moon Forty Four, and then he would go on to do a lot of adult pornos for a good while. And of course Kiefer Sutherland, for the for the amount of time that he's there, he does okay. But he would go on to be in other other films that are that are very notable in his career, like uh, Lost Boys, uh, Young Guns, and Young Guns Two, Renegades, Flatliners, Twenty Force, the TV series, and you name it. Um, but yeah, and it's really because of James Foley's direction. He really knows how to direct actors, and James Foley has done n numerous films. The music that is done by. Patrick Leonard, he does capture the uh, the cues in the very beginning very well, and some other intense scenes, and especially during the sequences when they're um, you know robbing or whenever. The, um, I'm trying to remember the most memorable. It's really hard to say looking back. Um, the very beginning and the in the very montage whenever Terry and um, Terry and Brad Jr. Are, are together. They're interacting. They're they're hanging out with uh, his buddies and whatnot. But they're uh, really you know immersed in them in themselves, really wanting to be together. And that's why you know that's why Terry is pretty much like the loyal girlfriend of the bunch. She's um, almost like a ride and, and die chick. And um, yeah. And. The cinematography was very well done. I like how um, in the very opening we see Brad Jr. driving around and he's basically kind of looking around. That's when he first notices Terry. Done very done in slow motion. She, he notices her smile. Um, just really, um, just very well put together and shows why Brad Jr. kind of fell for her from the moment he saw her. And. And the, like I said, in the scene where you see um, the lighting when they when it reveals both Tommy and and Brad Senior, that's very well shot. I like how you see the silhouettes, which is happening at night. Um, you like I like some of the cinematography scenes that you seen where you see uh, Terry's uh, home, which is around the kind of the rural farm area. Um, I also like how they sh did this one little brief sequence where Brad's gang infiltrates a place and they steal a safe and there's like shitloads of bills and money in there. So yeah, it does a great job on that part. Um, I guess the one drawback to this film is that unfortunately some of the supporting characters aren't, aren't exactly likable. They they pretty much get themselves into the situation. They're not the worst people, but unfortunately they all meet a dead end. The, the really sympathetic the really sympathetic characters you kind of feel for are really maybe Terry and to, and to some degree Tommy as well and maybe a little bit of Brad and what's even scary about this is that this this like I said before this was a true story and this actually in fact happened this sociopath uh, uh, Bruce Johnston senior who, who is this who is it's based on actually existed just really cold-blooded just downright nasty, vicious, and evil in many ways you can think of. Um, yeah, it's, it's quite unnerving about that. He almost kind of gives uh, the hitcher, the last review that I did, kind of a run for his money. And, um, yeah. But anywho, would I recommend this film? Absolutely. It's very well acted. It has everything going for it. It has great, confident, and competent direction by James Foley. Um, speaking of this film, this movie did not do well at all. I guess the audience was not ready for a film like this. The budget was roughly around six and a half million and only made like 2.3 million. And so yeah, it was kind of a disappointing flop, but it definitely found its audience whenever it was released on VHS. And um, it's unfortunate because um, it's a very, very well acted film. Um, it really, it's a really gripping film that just kind of keeps you on the edge and it's definitely worth watching and definitely worth owning. In fact, like I said before, I have the Blu-ray. This is the imprint release because this one had more features because originally when this came out on Blu-ray, it was released by Twilight Time. Um, they had basically just the trailer, the the commentary, and the isolated score and that was it. This Blu-ray has all, has all that plus a photo gallery and plus it also had three interviews. You have an interview with director James Foley. 
you also have an interview with the, the, the former reporter who basically um, basically talked about the jailing of the Johnston gang. And you also have an interview with composer Patrick Leonard. And there's actually like a Badlands short feature about the geographic locations of the actual events that transpired in this film. So it's definitely worth owning if you want to get this Blu-ray. As for anything else, um, I don't think there's anything. I don't think there's anything more I can say. It's it's definitely worth owning. It's definitely worth buying. I'd say give it a watch. It's it's not going to be for everyone, but it's it's definitely worth checking out just to see what you know unfolded and maybe like a and the scene where you know Brad actually confronts his father. That was something that was not. That didn't actually happen that was done for cinematic purposes but i definitely think it kind of gives it a boost you know as a very intense comfort confrontation between father and son so yeah i think this film is just is definitely ahead of its time and it and it didn't really get the recognition that it deserved and i think it deserves it so yeah so anyways before i start to really look like i'm out of place i'm going to end it here feel free to like comment and share this review and next up, I'm, I'm going to give you a little preview of what I'm going to be doing next. From the people who brought you Platoon and The Last Emperor comes a film that's a real discovery. One that Gene Siskel says is one of his favorite films. From the windswept plains of Montana, where dreams are easily blown away. A lot of dead people out here. Comes a thriller starring Dermot Mulroney, Lily Taylor, Valerie Perrine, Burt Young, and Sam Shepard. I'd like to find some way to hurt you. Bright Angel.